Hello guys, so in this video we will learn the theory and um, of the TDD test driven development and we will have a look at an example and we'll try to implement it with uh, TDD. Okay, to do it uh, we first have to download uh, to clone the repo which is um, here you have the repo you'll have the link to the repo in the description too and yeah let's do it so this is a repo let's enter it and you'll see inside the repo uh, there are four uh, four languages listed these are directories in which you will find um, ready skeletons ready scaffolding for a TDD kata. So um, according to the title of this video, we'll do this kata in Node.js and Jest. But if you'd like to um, do it in Scala or Java or Python, uh, on the way, um, while I'm doing that in Node.js, then you can do it. Uh, you can just enter Scala, read the readme, but we'll do it for Node.js. So uh, let's enter the Node.js and uh, in each in each directory, you will find the readme. Let's read the readme. So the readme says that you have to install the dependencies with npm package manager. Okay, so hopefully you have it. If you're a JavaScript developer, you probably have your npm installed on your machine. So this is what we will do now. It will take a couple of seconds. Okay, so once it's done, let's see the readme again. I have the dependencies installed in my node modules. Okay. And uh, yeah, we can run the tests with npm tests because I have the I have the just dependency installed here. Okay, so anyway, let's do it. Oops. So as you can see, it takes like uh, it took like five seconds in total. At the beginning, when it just starts, it takes a lot of time. But then it's so intelligent that it caches the result, the results, and um, makes it way quicker. So, for example, if I um, now press the A key on my on my keyboard, uh, we can rerun all the tests. Okay, and it took less less than that. Yeah, let's do it again. Yeah, even less, like way below one second. Okay, so uh, this is one. Cool thing about Jest is that uh, you have this cool CLI. Uh, you can do everything with your uh, with your keyboard. And uh, now we'll do a thing. So as you could see, as you can see, uh, there are already some tests implement some tests implemented. Uh, so we'll reopen the directory. I will recopy this stuff here, and let's see. Let's look at the tests. So for this kata, we'll just need one class, one module. Okay, so I'll, I will remove the rest. And as you can see, Jest automatically reruns the tests if it detects any change in any part of the code. Okay, so for example, we have here a test written like it's pretty self explanatory. So it says uh, a task three solver, which is the name of our module that we test should return 13. So we expect the task when we call a method called solve to return 13. So let's go to the task uh, method uh, function and we can see that it returns 13. So try to change it and you can see that just automa automatically reloaded all the files. Uh, so it's so cool, like uh, convention over configuration, you, you don't have to set up much, uh, just, just works like that. Let's return to 13. Okay, and now we have our um, working environment ready. We can jump into the theory. So what is TDD? TDD development says that we first write a test, testing as small part of functionalities as possible. Afterwards, we try to implement the functionality which was defined in the test, which still fails because we first run, a fa we, we first create a failing test. This is very important of a functionality that still does not exist. So we will, we know that it will fail. Actually in this step, uh, we must ensure ourselves that it is failing, okay? So uh, the second step is implement the functionality defined in the test and nothing more, okay? So I do 
as little as possible to make the test that I just wrote and all the tests that I wrote that I had that I had written before pass. Okay. And the last step is once you have uh, the functionality, um, like these two steps done, you have to refactor your code to make it clean and easy to maintain and extend in the future. Okay. And after these three steps, you repeat the loop. You like you keep looping. You keep doing that until um, all the functionality is implemented. So it might sound a bit uh, complicated. Like, um, well, we can just have have a look at the example, which says write a function that takes a positive number. Uh, it's always a positive number as an input and returns this if it's divisible by two, if it is if it is divisible by three, return boss and this boss if it is divisible by both two and three. Okay and nothing like empty string otherwise. So we can jump to, to our test, we can name it. So we'll start with the simplest test that we can write. Probably this one is the simplest one, like return nothing if the number is not divisible either, neither by two nor three. Okay, so it should return if n is not divisible, um, neither or by two or three, okay? So, um, so let's try to do it for number one or for number maybe seven and for number 11. This, these could be um, cool invocations. Oh, sorry, it should equal, actually we expect it to be equal an empty string, but this is where we put the arguments, right? So um, this is what we do. And we can see that Jest is complaining already. So we go back to our implementation and try to solve, try to go to the step number two, because we have a failing test with a small part of functionalities um, defined here. And now we have to implement the functionality. So we do something very stupid. We do as little as possible and just return an empty string. So now uh, our task three solver should return empty string if, it, if n is not divisible by two or three, okay. So we can now, um, well, we could try to refactor the code, but there's really not nothing to, to refactor. So we can jump, um, we can skip this, pet, this step and go uh, again to the step number one. So let's do it. Um, it should return fizz if n is divisible by two, but not three. Okay, so let's do, do it for four, for two, for maybe uh, four, and maybe eight. And yeah, fizz, fizz, fizz. So I saved the file, we have the test failing, and yeah, let's implement it. So, oh, you, you can see that I actually you know, forgot to uh, define add an argument, but since we weren't using any argument, uh, it, it's not a big deal, like at least in JavaScript, JavaScript, in other languages it would uh, complain heavily, uh, in more statically type languages, but anyway, we can now check if n divided by two, modulo divided by two equals zero, then return this. Okay, so we have our tests running. Again, it's very difficult to uh, refactor anything here. Uh, we could add else in here and do something like that. It should work too, but I will try to keep it keep it as short as possible. Okay. So now let's write another test. So let's see what was what functionalities we are we are left with. So we have to implement boss. Like we have to return the boss if it is divisible by three, but not two. Okay. Let's do it for. Th Three, maybe nine, and maybe twenty-one. Okay, each of these numbers are uh, divisible by three, but not two. And return boss, 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 and save it. Uh, we have to rename the test to just to make it to have to have it clean. Okay, and we have our test failing, so we can do something like. Well, we can just add another if, like if n is divisible by three, then print boss. 
and it works. Okay, so again, let's jump into this step number three, and it says refactor. What could we refactor here? Well, again, it's quite difficult. The problem is simple. Um, so I think we could jump to the uh, to the last functionality, last requirement that we have not implemented yet, which is to print. It should print this boss if n is divisible by. We don't need this by three, by two and three. Okay. So for example, at two times three, which is six, could be okay. Uh, two times three times seven or maybe uh, just a number 12 is okay too. And uh, in this case, we should return this boss. Okay, so we have our test failing. Uh, we can once again go back to the implementation and we can do a quick hack, something like, something like if n is divisible by three, whoops, and n is divisible by 2, whoops, it's divisible by 2 if it, mod like n modulo 2 equals 0. Okay, so we return, in this case, fizz boss. Okay, so we have some problems with our, okay, I just misspelled return, return fizz boss. So this is it, like we implemented all the functionality that is needed, but we are still left with one step. Like we are supposed to refactor our code. And uh, yeah, the tests, I think look, they look correct. Should print this bus if n is divisible by two and three, blah, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, but the problem with the code is that, let's say um, the n equals six. So we enter, or maybe um, enter equal, um, it equals nine. So it enters, um, the function. The first condition is checked, it's true. So the second condition is checked too, but it's false. Then we check the same condition that we already checked once again, uh, and we return boss. And it is, it's correct, but uh, the problem is that we, uh, like our code is n unnecessarily um, too long maybe, and it calculates uh, the same stuff twice. Yeah, so we could create like uh, a variable uh, like is divisible by three and put this part of the code here and then use the result, something like this. But I would say that uh, something even more uh, more clean would be to uh, define a, a variable like words and um, new array. And what we could do here, I would return words or maybe, um, yeah, what I would do here is to actually command this stuff here. And if it's divisible by three, I should add this word to words. And the same for fizz. Okay. And, and the, at the end, I should join everything I have amassed in words with a space. So it's still failing. I don't know why, but just give me a second, let's delete it. And yeah, okay, so we have our last test failing. It says that we have, we are returning fizz boss instead of boss fizz. I mean, we are returning boss fizz instead of fizz boss. Yeah, expected one is in green, received in red. So, oh yeah, sure, we should, we should check for divisibility by two first. And this is it. So we implemented um, all the functionalities, all the requirements. We tested them uh, one by one. And then at the end, we refactored the code. So it depends on your own personal opinion. If it's refactored or not, I would argue that it is. Because once we add more conditions, maybe uh, in the future, we would like to check uh, if it's divisible, uh, divisible by uh, 17 or something like that. Then we could just add another if without calculating any of the conditions twice. So um, this, is this is okay. And that will be it. This is the test driven development. And uh, hopefully, I hope you will try this technique when writing your code. 
and um, you can do it quite easily, at least for Node.js, with uh, various tools like Jest, uh, which you can uh, clone directly from, from my repo, or to start um, by yourself, like by cloning another repo or using e even other tools for JavaScript, which are plenty. Uh, JavaScript has, um, yeah, like there are basically too many tools to choose from, which is, uh, I would say, which is great. So uh, hopefully in next video, I will show you a more complicated example, maybe a more real life example, maybe uh, with a different language. And for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and uh, see you soon.